Dear Indian friends, greetings from Valley Italia Tontotto and welcome back. I am Caterina Brazzi Castracane, I am an historian and I am here in collaboration with the Italian Culture Center in New Delhi to share with you another appointment dedicated to the rediscovery of some wonderful cities in Italy. And today, for the same reasons, we are going to talk about Salerno, a wonderful town in the south part of the Italian peninsula in that region called Campania, actually the same region of Naples. And Salerno, that is probably a city you do not expect. We are going to try to understand together why this is possible. First of all, it's important to start remembering the geographical position of this city and its territory because, as you can notice the using this map, uh, the city of Salerno is situated in the south part of the uh, Campania region, in a territory that uh, during the past was considered a natural border between different areas of the south of the Italian peninsula. This in particular means that uh, during that time Times the city had a role of first importance uh, into the development uh, of, in general, uh, this part uh, of our south. And that, in particular, the city of Salerno uh, was completely transformed uh, several times uh, during the uh, past, also to be one of the capitals of the different kingdoms that were organized there uh, during that time. Actually, there is no precise information on the origins of Salerno, but it's probably that during the ancient times that the city was colonized by Greeks, together with other important parts of our south, destined to be remembered as the Magna Grecia, the huge dominion of Greece in the south part of Italy. Greeks that were able to bring there the the cultivation of flax, with olive trees and orchards. Still today, the products uh, most remarkable of this part of Italy, together with uh, some amazing example of uh, fruits, including orange and lemons, but also part of the Italian gastronomical heritage in general. After then, the territory was colonized by the Etruscans. Uh, that, uh, were able instead uh, to organize there the first example of uh, industries linked in particular with uh, textile uh, ceramic that still today is part of of the important uh, cultural heritage of the uh, city and also bronze what is certain is that in the year 197, uh, the city became a Roman colony, and in particular, uh, then it was named Salernum. That is just a composed Latin word with uh, two different parts. First of all, the Latin word Salum, that just means sea, and the second word uh, used to compose this name was the word Irnum just uh, the Latin version of the Italian name of the river Irno that still today crosses uh, the town. The city after that moment uh, was quickly transformed uh, into an important center of power uh, whose ruins are still visible in different archaeological sites around uh, the uh, ancient city of Salernum. But also, and this is important uh, for us uh, to be remembered, uh, the city was also able uh, to survive after the fall of the Western Roman Empire when it was conquered by other important revolutions. And uh, in this way, there is uh, in particular uh, here that you can consider the, as uh, the real uh, turning point for the destiny of Salerno, the year 786, uh, when uh, the Lombard king Areki II uh, decided to transfer the ducal set of Benevento to Salerno. In this case, uh, the king decided uh, the is a political action uh, to escape an attack by Charlemagne and also to gain control of a strategic area between uh, the coast and uh, inland communications. 
I reckon it was uh, the king who first of all decided that to fortify their town, starting with uh, the reedification of an ancient castle destined uh, to be the icon of a fortress of the Middle Age. This castle was uh, named after the Lombard king and destined uh, in particular to be the uh, most remarkable example of a fortress built uh, to celebrate the power of this new kingdom. Uh, the castle uh, was uh, originally and still today it is situated uh, 300 meters above sea level on the top of one of the most important hill of the city of Salerno called Mount Bonarius. Actually, Arachi decided to enlarge this original castle to create a fortress that quickly became famous in all the different parts of the Italic peninsula. And still today this is a wonderful historical location because in particular the castle was enlarged and transformed after the period of the King of Reiki under the important dynasties who ruled the power of this city during the next centuries. But also because recently it it was restored to be both an important museum linked with the history of this amazing city, but also to be an important public space with a conference hall and different rooms dedicated to house temporary exhibitions. And in this way, the castle was completely transformed into an historical place with uh, all the elements uh, linked with uh, the modern necessities of uh, a new town. Arreki was also the first interpreter of an important cultural revolution that took place in Salerno during that time. And among all the different institutions that were organized there during that time, the most representative is the School of Medicine. Um, originally uh, organized there during that time and quickly became famous for its precious uh, scientific discoveries uh, that are fundamental still today. You have to imagine that we are talking about the oldest institution in Western Europe. And so probably you are asking yourself why it's possible that a so important institution was organized in Salerno during that time of the Middle Age. And the answer to this question is again linked with the geographical position of Salerno. Because you have to imagine that during that time Salerno was was the real earth of the Mediterranean and in particular it was the center of different maritime trades with in particular the east, the Africa and the south part of the Italian peninsula. And this also means that quickly the city was transformed into a sort of multicultural town. This is the reason why the legend attributed the foundation of the school to four Masters arrived there from four different parts of the world. The masters were the Hebrew Elinus, the Greek Pantus, the Arab Adela, and also the Latin Salernus. Four figures destined to transform the, in general the ancient arts medica in something modern, something that you can consider as the first step for the edification of uh, the uh, new interpretation of medicine in general. And uh, the school was uh, so famous uh, to be inscribed in the year 1231 inside uh, the famous uh, constitutions uh, published by the Emperor Federico II in uh, Melfi in that year. And in particular inside uh, this constitution uh, was written uh, 
that uh, the title of doctor was uh, obtained uh, only from the people uh, who had passed uh, the examination of the public school of medicine in Salerno. And this in particular means uh, that after that moment uh, the school became famous not only in Italy but in general uh, in all Europe. For us, uh, it's also interesting uh, to know this, a uh, specific aspect uh, of this uh, school, because uh, we have to remember that uh, uh, the school was opened, uh, and in particular that uh, the medical profession uh, there was also practiced uh, by women. This uh, also means uh, that uh, there uh, was uh, a specific group of women called Mulieres Salernitane, destined to transform in general the argument of medicine in something modern. Women that were able to study, to write and also to practice this important profession and also to be remembered as the icons of a specific and particular moment uh, of the history of the Middle Age. Among this uh, different group of uh, women we can remember Trotula de Ruggero, an important doctor uh, still today considered a sort of myth of this uh, city and destined definitely to transform the idea of medicine for the rest of our history. Some centuries later, uh, a doctor of this uh, school, uh, Matteo Silvatico, decided uh, to create it, uh, in the heart of the ancient center of Salerno an important example of garden, considered the first example of a botanical garden. I am talking about the so named Giardini della Minerva, an important educational space uh, where doctors uh, taught uh, students uh, to recognize uh, the sample. Still today, the name used for the plants used to cure disease. This garden is a sort of myth of Salerno, considered at that time the perfect example of a garden destined also to the development in general of the link between natural plants and medicine. And today, this is a wonderful museum with alive masterpieces. You have to imagine that this wonderful place, full of important and different spaces of plants collected during the centuries, is also an amazing part of this historic center overlooking to the sea uh, full of important examples of plants and uh, with a specific attention to the educational activities dedicated in particular to the rediscovery of the relationship between man and nature. Coming back to the history of Salerno, we can uh, recognize another turning point in the year 1076 when the normal leader Robert the Guiscard was able to conquire this city, bringing actually an end to the old age domination. He was uh, not only able to conquer the, this city, but also to marry uh, the sister of the last prince of Salerno, Gisulfo II. Her name was uh, Sigel Guide. And uh, since that moment, uh, for a period, uh, the city of Salerno became the capital of the Duchy of Puglia and Calabria. The Guiscard decided to transform other important part of the historic center of this city. First of all, building a new residence for his court and his family, because he chose not to live inside the Arachi castle. In this way, he realized an important example of new residence inside the center of this city called Castel Terracena and built in honor of his wife Sigelgaida. Uh, 
castle unfortunately completely destroyed uh, during uh, the mid 13th century. Uh, we can uh, recognize the, some parts uh, of the huge decoration uh, that was, was realized to uh, emphasize uh, the power of this residence on different uh, walls inside the historic center. So where uh, important example of polychrome inlays uh, originally used to decorate uh, the residence of the Guiscard were reused to emphasize uh, the link uh, with uh, the present of Salerno and uh, the huge and important past uh, of uh, this uh, city. But actually the Guiscard had also a role of first importance uh, in the, the foundation of the Cathedral of Salerno, the cathedral dedicated uh, to St. Matthew, the uh, patron saint of this uh, city, uh, whose uh, relics are still today housed inside uh, the crypt. Actually the cathedral was uh, uh, consecrated uh, in the year 1084 at the present uh, Natalia of the Guiscard but also of the Pope Gregory VII, who had taken refuge in Salerno a short time before. The cathedral was designed on the um, um, same uh, shape of the Desiderio Abbey in Monte Cassino, still today one of the most representative examples of Abbey in the central part of Italy, with a specific plan, a huge basilica with three longitudinal nays, a transept and a quadriporticus. Actually, the current entrance has modified the medieval and in particular the huge atrium that you can recognize here in this part of the model was surrounded by in 28 important examples of bare columns with a different kind of arches destined uh, this uh, space uh, to be a sort of perfect uh, stage for uh, other elements linked with the past in particular linked with uh, the huge Roman past with uh, the presence uh, here in this part of the atrium uh, around uh, the important bronze door that is still today the entrance of Roman sarcophages put there to emphasize the rule of this cathedral as a new pantheon of this city. There is also a wonderful example of a bell tower realized during the 12th century. While the interior was transformed several times with the realization of important examples of private chapels um, decorated during the modern age in particular with paintings uh, realized uh, by the new generation of uh, artists uh, who used to work there. The most uh, representative part of this church is deprived, uh, where uh, in the year 1081 uh, the relics of St. Matthew were uh, buried. Actually, the deprived uh, was completely redesigned by the master Domenico Fontana during the second part of the modern age. Domenico Fontana, who was in charge uh, of the architectural and decorative project. And in this case, uh, he realized uh, uh, a vault with uh, octagonal uh, squares uh, and also with uh, circular uh, ones. Uh, elements completely decorated with uh, fresco paintings and uh, with stuccos. Uh, this is uh, amazing uh, technique uh, realized to emphasize uh, the uh, richness uh, but also the holy aspect of uh, this important important part of the church. Inside the cathedral there is also another important monument, uh, actually a tomb, the tomb of the Queen Margherita di Durazzo, another myth of the history of uh, Salerno, uh, Queen of Naples, but uh, a woman who died not so far from uh, this uh, city in the year 1412 because of the plague, and uh, a woman who was buried uh, first of all in the San Francisco 
uh, convent and then uh, this uh, wonderful example of tomb was translated during the first part of the 19th century inside the cathedral. This tomb is uh, a wonderful example of a Gothic funeral monument realized by first of all an important artist of that time Antonio Bovaccio da Piperno with the help of his collaborator Alessio De Vico. The architectural structure follows really the essential line of uh, the Gothic funeral monuments with in particular four statues, four caryatid statues uh, depicting the virtues, in particular the faith, the fortitude, but also the prudence and the regality, realized there to support uh, the chest with the figures of the queen. Queen uh, that was completely um, realized uh, according uh, to her uh, power uh, and uh, her uh, important uh, regality and destinating in this case uh, to be a sort of uh, first icon of a new kind of uh, queen, a sort of saint queen destinated uh, to be celebrated also after death. Still today, all these monuments are part of uh, the historic center that has uh, recently been revalued and restored to be transformed into an important center of uh, art culture and tourism. And for us it's also interesting to notice that in the last 10 years uh, public parks have increased with them fold so much that Salerno deserves the nickname of city garden. And among all the different uh, public uh, green areas uh, realized uh, during that time we can remember in particular the uh, beautiful Trieste waterfront, a sort of uh, pedestrian path that winds from the historic center to the tourist port. This wonderful uh, uh, waterfront uh, was actually realized uh, during uh, the 20s uh, to resolve some uh, urbanistical problem of the uh, city and also um, it was completely redesigned after the Second World War uh, when Salerno uh, lived dramatical moments uh, also because there arrived uh, the Anglo-American armies uh, to resolve this uh, important uh, war. But actually later uh, after that uh, dramatic moment uh, the uh, seafront was transformed in one of the most beautiful in Italy and still today this is uh, the uh, alive part uh, of the city of of Salerno in particular during uh, the Christmas uh, time when uh, all this area together other, with other parts uh, of the historic center is completely covered with a wonderful example of lies realized by important contemporary artists uh, to adorn uh, this uh, city celebrating uh, her uh, beauty but also the miracle of uh, light and and Christmas in general. This uh, event uh, that is called Luci d'Artista is uh, the same uh, we had talked about uh, some month uh, um, ago uh, talking about uh, the charming capital of our north, uh, Turin, and this is the reason why the city of Turin and Salerno are twinned uh, because of this important uh, event that is something that that help us also to link our south and our north uh, during uh, that important moment of the year. Um, there is a last aspect uh, of this uh, city that I would like to share with you, As an aspect linked with uh, uh, the contemporary architecture uh, that uh, exists in this part of uh, the city. Because in particular you have to remember that uh, during the 90s uh, the municipality of this city decided to um, uh, entrust important uh, and 
and international architects uh, to transform original buildings uh, in other form or to build other important examples of a new kind of palaces. And among all the important artist stars arrived there to realize important public spaces, we can remember the Anglo-Iraqan architect Zaha Hadid, who realized in Salerno an amazing and wonderful example of a maritime station. A wonderful public space located on the Manfredi Molo of the commercial port, uh, a sort of link between uh, the sky and uh, the sea, but a sort of perfect uh, scenography for the uh, waterfront and the rest of the coast of Salerno. Uh, Zahadid was uh, in this design completely inspired by nature, so she realized this important um, public space with the shape of an oyster on the uh, sea level and also decorating the uh, top of this building with important and ceramic elements. In this case, a real tribute to the local tradition of ceramics. Tradition that you can discover only going six kilometers far from Salerno in a wonderful village called Vietri sul Mare, um, actually an important sea village also listed by UNESCO for its beauty beauty and cultural heritage. There, probably since the ancient times, were produced important examples of ceramics. And this is the reason why there, inside a turret of a wonderful villa called Villa Guariglia, since the year 1980, was organized a ceramic museum. A museum that, together with the important ancient shops that you can find a still today inside the historic center of this village are the touchable proof of an art that is still alive, still worked and considered as one of the most remarkable parts of our cultural heritage in general. As you are going to understand, all the territory of this city is a sort of wondrous territory, full of amazing places um, that you can discover the spending sometimes in this part of our south. And among them, uh, we can remember three more important places uh, destined to be remembered, first of all, uh, for the archaeological value, but also for the gastronomical one and eventually for the natural aspect linked with a new idea of public national green areas in Italy. First of all the a wonderful place uh, that I want to share with you uh, not so far from uh, Salerno is uh, the ancient city of Pestum, actually an uh, original Greek uh, town founded around 600 uh, BC and uh, initially called Poseidonia from uh, Poseidon or Neptune, uh, the god of the sea. The city was conquered uh, later by other Italian populations in particular the Lucanians, and definitely by the Romans who named it Pestum. This uh, wonderful town uh, is uh, worldwide famous because of the presence of three Greek temples built between uh, the 6th and the 5th centuries BC and consider her the best preserved temporal buildings from the classical age together with uh, those in Athens uh, in Greece uh, and uh, those in Agrigento in our uh, south in 
Sicily. This area was completely rediscovered during the 18th century, a moment when important artists, including Goethe or Piranesi, spent a lot of time there only to paint this amazing uh, rest of the past uh, in that moment uh, rediscovered and transformated quickly into the icon of the huge past of this area. All the um, ancient city was organized around these three tables with in particular two uh, important spaces a market uh, considered the uh, sort of uh, Latin evolution of the agora of the uh, Greece uh, time, the public space for excellence, uh, but also important living quarters extended around this area. The city was completely surrounded by an important example of a wall still today visible in some parts and considered uh, as uh, one of the most uh, remarkable elements linked with uh, the uh, precise value of this archaeological site. The temple are uh, amazing. Three uh, important examples of uh, uh, Greek architecture. The first one is uh, the so named Basilica, but probably uh, a temple dedicated of Hera, that was uh, the protector of the Athens and wife of Zeus. And uh, this is in particular the oldest of the three, the three buildings, uh, probably began around uh, the 560 BC. Um, it uh, is uh, an important example of temple that uh, was uh, composed with uh, this uh, ancient um, example of columns uh, to emphasize the uh, real protection of a specific area inside it. We actually don't know which kind of activity activities were organized there. The second one uh, is uh, the only temple we uh, really know which uh, divinity it was dedicated uh, to. It was uh, dedicated uh, to Hafen, uh, the goddess of craftsmanship and war, and it was uh, situated uh, uh, in another part uh, of uh, the uh, city, um, north uh, to of the public uh, spaces, uh, uh, and uh, in particular in this case, uh, it was built uh, something about uh, f 15 years uh, uh, later than uh, the other one. In this case, uh, the internal part uh, that was called the cell was uh, uh, a sort of uh, private room that was accessible uh, only through a large antechamber that was uh, called uh, pronaus, completely decorated uh, with uh, ionic uh, columns. The third uh, temple uh, is uh, an amazing uh, um, part uh, of uh, art is probably the most perfect example of a Templar Doric architecture in Italy, but also in Greece, um, was uh, attributed to Neptune during uh, the 18th century, but probably it was dedicated to Apollo, uh, and in particular to Apollo for his uh, capacity as uh, a doctor. This temple uh, was built with uh, huge boulders, uh, connected to each other uh, by simple doors and without mortar. Uh, this is one of the reasons uh, why the temple survived uh, to important natural uh, disasters uh, that uh, took place uh, in this part of uh, Italy, in particular during uh, the 18th century. 
actually inside uh, this uh, important uh, archaeological site uh, there is also a wonderful museum uh, dedicated uh, to the um, amazing pieces of art found inside this uh, space and among all the different uh, uh, masterpieces uh, still today housed inside this place uh, we can remember the sort of myth together with the temples of this site. The soon named tomb of the diver consider the only example of the Greek age painting of Magna Grecia. We are talking about uh, a wonderful uh, example of a painted uh, tomb found uh, in the year 1968 uh, and destined uh, to be a sort of monument of uh, the, Greek, um, the great moment uh, of the Greek uh, painting. In particular, the most uh, representative aspect of this uh, tomb is uh, an important uh, roof uh, slab decorated uh, with with uh, these figures, a man diving uh, into the water uh, and uh, realized that to symbolize uh, the real uh, passage uh, to, from life uh, to death, uh, something that is uh, really destined uh, to be remembered uh, as one of uh, the most romantic representation of death and for this reason also a sort of postcard from Pestum. The reason why I would like to uh, talk about uh, Battipaglia is uh, instead uh, um, completely linked uh, with uh, a gastronomical pleasure because this city is considered the capital of mozzarella made with uh, buffalo milk. Here in particular ancient techniques and tradition uh, and it uh, really down from uh, generation to generation allowed the processing of fresh, uh, mm, fresh buffalo milk in the prosperous uh, Piana of uh, Sele, an amazing territory completely devoted uh, to the production of uh, this uh, wonderful cheese. And this is the reason why there was uh, organized uh, an important example of the Ethno Anthropological Museum, the Buffalo and Mozzarella Museum a place uh, destined uh, to um, rediscover the history of the coexistence uh, actually of men with uh, the buffalo in death uh, country uh, side and uh, also an important uh, museum uh, where it's still possible to uh, try uh, the experience uh, to be uh, a cheese producer for one day with uh, specific and important uh, didactical activities and uh, after uh, this uh, an important uh, place uh, where it's still possible to uh, discover another and important uh, piece of uh, the wonderful Italian gastronomic uh, heritage um, in particular uh, uh, protected uh, with uh, the brand DOP that uh, help us to recognize the, the different kind of mozzarellas still produced in other parts of Italy. In this case, the real buffalo mozzarella is only protected in the region of Campania. The wonderful mozzarella of Battifaglia is called the Zizona One and is something amazing that you can discover only tasting it. But uh, the last aspect uh, and we are going uh, to hand to a short uh, lecture today linked with uh, this territory is a wonderful uh, part uh, of uh, Italy uh, called Cilento in particular 
another important uh, uh, Latin word composed of two different uh, parts, cis and alentum, that just means on this side of the river Alento. Uh, wonderful, uh, charming area, uh, destinated to be remembered in particular for a wonderful example of uh, beaches, uh, but also caves and natural monuments, but also uh, hamlets and the fisherman's village, but also and in particular archaeological and artistical masterpieces linked with the man and uh, his territory. Actually, this uh, part of Italy is uh, a park, a national park established in the year 1991 and considered the second largest national park in Italy, but it was also listed by UNESCO. In particular, uh, has a part of uh, an important and prestigious network uh, linked with uh, Biosphere and uh, the man uh, inside a specific uh, UNESCO program called MAD. This uh, wonderful part uh, of the Campania region uh, is uh, really a paradise for all because you can discover it with specific uh, guided uh, hikes uh, to discover the, the nature but also you can uh, find amazing examples of uh, ancient ruins completely surrounded uh, by plants and with uh, the presence uh, also of uh, protected animals. In one word, this is uh, the perfect place uh, where you can spend uh, some time for uh, a refreshing holiday, not only in summer but in general for all the year because it's a paradise that you can discover in uh, each part of the earth and in every um, season. At this point, uh, I stop sharing uh, with you my screen to say thank you very much for your attention. We will see you again during the next month uh, to talk about other important, wonderful and strange uh, cultural uh, parts of Italy. And for today, thank you, thank you a lot. Uh, enjoy and we will see during the uh, next uh, appointment. Bye bye.